Today on an all-new Dr. Phil. When her mom went missing, she suspected her stepdad. I think he killed her. Or his daughter, Lauren. He's given her leads. Telling her about sightings of her mother all over town. That go nowhere. It feels like I'm just on a wild goose chase. Dead end. Dead end. Another dead end. Ed said that my mom was spotted here. They have surveillance cameras. If my wife had been missing, I'd be camped out over there till they freeze frame that woman walking in that door. It just didn't occur to me to do that. Maybe now. Why did you want to take her off stage at the break? I didn't want to take her off. There will be answers. How did you know she was missing? Well, I mean, I... You used the word missing, and we're going to be blamed. I just wondered if you would answer my question. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I'll try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Yesterday, we started digging into a missing persons case involving a mother named Carrie Zaplatel, who vanished nine months ago on a cold December night from the home she shared with her husband of seven years, Ed. Now, Carrie's daughter, Shelby, is convinced that her stepfather, Ed, or Ed's daughter, Lauren, are responsible for killing her mother or hiding what they know. Shelby says she's past her breaking point and wants answers about how her mother vanished without a coat, car keys, phone, or identification nearly nine months ago. Here's what happened yesterday. I truly believe that my mother's husband, Ed, has something to do with my mother's disappearance. A daughter is desperate to find her mother who's been missing for nine days. Zap Patel's husband told police his wife, Carrie, walked out of the house on a very cold day in December. That was the last time her family saw her. When Carrie disappeared, I just had a stroke and I was physically incapable of getting out of bed. Shelby needs to realize that Carrie's got a lot of issues. In addition to abusing alcohol, she's been known to abuse prescription drugs and some other things also. It's trying to paint a picture that my mom is a crackhead or a prostitute. That idea is absolutely absurd. Your fear is that this this wasn't some accident. You, you think she's been murdered? Yes, sir. Who do you think killed her? I think Ed has involvement. You're saying you couldn't have harmed her if you wanted to? No, absolutely not. I was a vegetable. I think he killed her. Or his daughter, Lauren. He did something, he hit her choked her, shot her, stabbed her, something. He could not sit up. He could not stand up. He could not feed himself. He wasn't as debilitated as he made himself out to be. Were her things missing, too? My mom left her vehicle identification. She didn't even take a coat. The night the Carol missing, she wasn't in the right state of mind and was walking around the house completely nude. It was really strange behavior because nobody had seen her acting this way. What happened between the two of you that night? She was just telling me how depressed she was. We actually entered into a suicide pact. She was going to kill herself, and I, and I would kill myself also. And you've never mentioned that to anybody before now? No, I guess, I guess not. She left behind a, a debit card with money on it, but the money has not been accessed. Trust me, I've been doing this for 40 years. The first thing they do is run through cash. Do you think it odd that she's totally off the grid? I'm totally convinced that she's still alive. I, I think she does not want to be found. Listen, I talked to FBI profilers in the last 12 hours about, is it just me or is this really odd? And yes. you know what they said? They said adults have the right to go missing if they want to. Mm -hmm. they, they do. They have the right to go missing if they want to. But in this day and age, for an adult to go totally off the electronic grid and not be seen or heard from in nine months is very, very odd. Mm -hmm. uh, and for you guys to say, nope, doesn't strike me odd at all. But yet, when we were interviewing you, 
the the last thing that you said in your tape piece was when I told my dad that Carrie wasn't in the house or anywhere to be found, he looked really surprised and really shocked. We were totally dumbfounded. Well, he cried. I was sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, you know, she's missing and somebody's gonna be blaming us. It seems that way and I still feel that way because my dad is getting blamed for this. Why would that be your first thought the split second you know she's gone? Because but yet now, you don't even think it's odd that she hadn't been seen or heard from in nine months? I don't, I know this is not only her behavior. You know, it would not only be anything she would do. But for her to, and me to witness, you know, hearing her, the door shut and her it seemed to be her walking out of the house because everybody else was in the house. Everybody else was accounted for. I was in my room and me hearing, you know, footsteps down, going down the hallway. And That's I a thought, new one. Well, you know, I thought it was Brad, but I, knew, I realized Brad was in his room later on. Mm -hmm. But when my dad asked me to go get the charger and her not to not be there, I had to put two and two together and realize that she had walked out of the house. Plus, I saw the door was open. Um, okay, hold on. Well, now answer my question. Why at that moment did you realize she's gone? Was your first thought, we are going to be blamed? I felt like, you know, if anybody had thought, oh, well, she's missing, so, you know, we'll probably be blamed for it because, you know, I mean, I would have felt probably nobody would have believed me that she just walked away. How did you know she hadn't just gone out to the car to get cigarettes? I actually did look outside. How did you know she hadn't just gone to the store? How did you know she hadn't gone outside to just stand there? How did you know she was missing? Well, I mean, you had, I... She had been, in your mind, she had been gone 20 seconds. And you used the word missing, and we're going to be blamed. Didn't you say that uh, Ashlyn saw her leaving? She said she had claimed to see her leaving. She said she yeah, heard her leave. leave. Walking, she saw her walking out. She was looking out the window and saw her, saw her leaving, so, according to what Ashlyn And how old is Ashlyn? Ashlyn is Lauren's Ash daughter. Yeah. Ashlyn is seven. And so you know, that's when why she we went, when she went missing sure from the house, I, you know, I told my dad immediately. And then I went outside to look for her. I, I just <coughs> wondered if you would answer my question. What was the question? Good. The question is why your mind went the minute you see her gone. Mm -hmm. That A, she's missing, and B, we're going to be blamed. I mean, she was. I mean, she was missing from the house. I, I didn't know where she went. I, you know, at first I, it, I thought that maybe she had gone, you know, sat in the truck or you know something. Um, I checked the truck. There was nothing, nobody in the truck. So I thought that maybe she had gone on foot. Um, I, as far I got down, as far as I could go toward the neighborhood, all you know, as far as I could go for you know maybe about five ten minutes or so. And then when I couldn't find her, I. Figured, okay, well, she's missing from the house. She's not in the house. I don't know where she is and when she'll be back. And I don't know what happened to her or where she went. Okay. Uh, next, Ed says he expects his wife to walk through the door sometime soon. Boy, I hope, hope that's right. Shelby says he's just not living in the real world. We're going to find out what he's been telling Shelby that has her completely frustrated when we come back. Ed sent me to addresses that didn't even exist, like this gas station. Ed said that my mom was spotted here buying beer. 
they had never seen my mom before. It feels like I'm just on a wild goose chase. And later... Why did you want to take her off stage at the break? It's, it's that I didn't want to take her off, but... Uh, no, that's but what you said. Could we take her off stage and put her up there? I just want... There was no intention to take Lauren off stage. Oh, well, I was confused because you said, could we take Lauren off stage? Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. My mom kicked me out when I was 15 years old. I did not throw her out. Ungrateful daughter. I was at her knees begging, I'm sorry. My daughter was recoiling in the chair. Or is mom delusional? Did you threaten that therapist? No, sir. You throw a check on the floor and say, have a nice life. This therapist's job is to bring mother and daughter together. Yes, sir. And as and I said. And she says, I quit. That's tomorrow. Shelby says, ever since we were contacted by the Dr. Phil show, Ed has suddenly become interested in the search for her mother. She says he's been telling her about sightings of her mother all over town. Sadly, when Shelby goes to investigate, the lead turns into a dead end. This is my mom's residence from where she went missing. My mom left without her car, her vehicle, which is still sitting in the driveway. No phone identification nothing was taken other than the clothes on her back. In the middle of December, I've searched in the back. There's nothing but woods. All this brush goes miles out, miles out. And I searched out there without luck. Ed sent me to addresses that didn't even exist, like this gas station, for instance, that there was park benches next to it or across the street that my mom was sleeping on. And as you can see, there's no park benches, not on either side of the gas station, not across the street from the gas station. It feels like I'm just on a wild goose chase. I've checked every hospital. I've checked every homeless shelter. I've checked every food bank. I've been in some pretty poor neighborhoods, drug areas. The reason why we're down there searching is because Ed is saying that she's been on drugs and I don't believe it. that my mom was spotted here buying beer. I came to the location, came in, asked store managers. They had never seen my mom before. Talked to other clerks. They said that they hadn't seen my mom. You have so much hope, and I, I'm not going to lose hope. I want to know what happened to my mom. But at the same time, you can't help but doubt it. Okay, to illustrate the links that Shelby says that she has gone to to chase leads that Ed gave her, we constructed this map of Memphis. Now, first, sighting is at a convenience store at Pauline and Poplar, but no store was found, so dead end. Then Shelby goes to Morris Park on Poplar and Manassas, another dead end. Correct? Yes, sir. Dead end. Then Carrie is sighted on Jefferson. She searches entire street. I never said anything and about Jefferson. Another dead end. Next, she's spotted at a convenience store around Memphis VA Medical Center. So you go there, right? Right. Dead Another end. dead end. Correct? Correct. Nothing there. Then Shelby heads to Morris Park on Poplar, dead end, uh, nothing there. Then Carrie is spotted at Union and Exchange, so she heads over there. No Union and Exchange. And never. dead end, nothing there. Finally, she's seen at a drugstore on Union and McLean, talks to the cashier, and you say, this is a dead end. Correct. You feel like you're getting run around. Yes, sir. And not finding anything anywhere in all of these places. Now, um, how did you get these tips? First of all, half of those never happened. And, and uh, I, I, the only th I told her about Poplar and Manassas. And I told her about the Union and McLean. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the, the Union McLean, the, uh, close to there, there's a drugstore that I went in and talked to, talked to the clerk who had sold Carrie the beer. And of course, for any alcohol transaction, you have to show ID. So, uh, so she had, so she saw saw Carrie's ID, and uh, and did you report that, Ed? Yes, I did. I, I told, I called missing persons immediately, and they told me that they were going to go there and and put up flyers and talk to people. Well, and what business were you in, by the way? What's your business? I was in video surveillance. And this cashier at the drugstore. Uh, which was, you talk about a great lead, right? Great news. And listen, I'm not prejudging any of this. I want to find this woman. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody needs to understand. I just want to find this woman. And here's, here's what she had to say. I do remember seeing the woman in the ID missing persons flyer. Okay, so we're, we're talking about somebody that's just been identified from a flyer. Mm -hmm. But then she says, I can't recall what day... Uh, she came in. I see hundreds of people every day, so it's impossible to know exactly what day it was. I can't recall if I checked her ID because I can't even remember for sure what I sold her. So, so, you know, you, you say she came in, she knows it was her because she checked her ID, but then when we talk to her, she says, well, I remember from a flyer, but I don't, even, I don't know the day. I saw hundreds of people. I don't even remember the day. I don't know if I checked her ID because I don't remember what I sold her. Other than that, I got it nailed. If she walked in that store, then it's on camera. I'd be camped out over there till they freeze frame that woman walking in or out of that door. And later, did you choke her? I, I, I wanted to, but you know, I just, I didn't have the, I mean, I, I wanted to defend myself, but I didn't have the strength. On the new season of Dr. Phil, my dad sent him money to a woman in Mexico that he had an affair with. She had to have a lung transplant. You paid for a lung. So she just showed up to a clinic with a lung and an igloo cooler and said, I'm here to get a transplant. That's basically what happened. Do you think maybe she's lied to you? I just want to know the truth. Is my brother-in-law a monster? An uncle too affectionate with his 16-year-old niece? You're sending her a letter that says, I love you with all my heart. You put whipped cream on your neck, and Grace says you ask her to lick it off. I don't remember doing that. The creep meter is pegging over here. Plus, you were the facialist to the stars. Jennifer Aniston, Courtney Cox. Accused of hiring a hitman to kill her rival. Did you solicit someone to kill this man? It was one of those, oh, I could kill this person. I should find someone to take him out. You typed out a text message. I have found someone that can do this deed for me. This fall on Dr. Phil. Then she says she looked like a normal person. None of the other sightings have said this, but she looked like a normal person. She was not disheveled uh, or on drugs. Just a regular Perfectly normal woman. I can confirm I've spoken with Ed and Shelby regarding my sighting of Carrie last week. They call me every day looking for new information, but I don't have any. So if she's gone into the drug culture, living on the streets, drinking, drugging, whatever, but she shows up looking like June Cleaver, that doesn't comport. But there's, there's a contradiction here. First of all, you're trying to show that 
she wasn't cited, and then you're trying to show that she was, now you're saying she was cited. No, I'm, I'm not trying to do anything. Right. What I'm doing, I'm not trying to do anything. What I'm doing is showing what the woman said. Okay. I, I'm not trying but to I'm, build a case for anything. Okay. What I do want to know is, I'm not saying the name of the drugstore, but this is a national chain, mm -hmm. and they have surveillance. Mm -hmm. They have video cameras. So there's film. If she walked in that store, then it's on camera. High def. Let's get it. Camera that can be looked at. If my wife had been missing for nine months, and somebody told me what I thought was a reliable report mm -hmm. of her walking in there, I'd be camped out over there till they freeze framed that woman walking in or out of that door. Just be over. Just be over. That's her. He needs to do that. Ed needs to push it, and missing person needs to do that. He immediately reported it to missing persons, hoping that he would get the help that he Listen, needs these are to human her. beings that run this i know the chain mm -hmm. I, I know the chain Th these these are not corporate ghosts these people are real people you go in and say my wife's missing pull that tape up let me see it that i guarantee you show you that tape in 10 minutes I guarantee I, they show me that tape in 10 it minutes it just didn't occur to me it didn't occur to you to say that no. this woman says she saw my wife she's been missing for nine months while i was bedridden in paralysis and she's missing and I can't find her. Please show me that tape, see if it's her. It did not occur to me and I, I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. Did it occur to anybody? I, I did. I asked. Did you, did you see I it? I went to see and she said, I see hundreds of people a, a day. I couldn't even tell you what day I, and she wouldn't do it. She wouldn't, she wouldn't let you see the surveillance? She wouldn't even ask to. Who, the clerk? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not the person to ask. Yeah, I should have asked the manager, but... Why, why did you want to take her off stage at the break? It's, it's that I didn't want to take her off, but... No, I, that's but what you said. Can we take her off stage and put her up I here? just wanted... I, I didn't... It's not that I wanted to take her off stage, but I wanted to get my sister up. There was no intention to take Lauren off stage when I, when I said that. I just thought... Oh, well, I was confused because you said, can we take Lauren off stage? Uh, well, <laughs> Dr. Phil, I am... And, a professional business and I know that Ed was counting on me for um, to speak very clearly to you and and was hoping well, that I you. was going to be by and his thank side. you for that sure and thank you for that you've been very clear we all want to find her right mm -hmm. what y'all are describing to me is a woman that was um, seemingly mentally and emotionally overwhelmed she was overwhelmed. By a situation. Why didn't anyone contact anyone? Why anybody what? Why did y'all never contact the family, like me or my brothers? If y'all think that she was that bad off, you should have contacted a hospital, somebody in the medical field, family, friends. You should well, have reached out. Well, your brother Bradley lived in the Bradley? house and saw her every day. Bradley has issues as well. We all know that. And you had another brother there on Thanksgiving. And he, but, he would be another witness as of my condition because. Yeah, yeah, that's. Yeah, they said that you were sitting at the table. <laughs> he was not. What? Uh, he said you were sitting at the table on Thanksgiving. I told you the pr procedure mm -hmm. that took for me to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. I, I would never sat at, at, at the kitchen table. Next, could Ed have physically harmed his wife, Carrie, if in fact he was in whatever level of incapacity he was in? We're going to find out why Shelby and some of Ed's critics say he was faking being sick and chose to go on vacations instead of searching for his missing wife when we come back. I, I think the thing that bothers her is his behavior after she went missing as well as before. We'll be right back. been violent with your wife on a frequent basis? No, I, I would defend myself. She would get drunk and very violent. No. I've witnessed you, you hit my mom before. You witnessed I it? I have. I've How? witnessed you, but you've never been around. Really?
And later, do you really believe she's alive? Absolutely. Because you know when I ask you that, you say yes, but you shake your head no. In the eight and a half months that Carrie Zapletel has been missing, her husband Ed says he's been the target of accusations and finger pointing from Carrie's family and friends. One of his largest critics is Courtney, who says Carrie called her 90% of the time after she had major blowouts with Ed. Carrie and I were really close. She was like my second mom. Carrie called me her ventilator because she could always vent to me about whatever's going on in her life. And she called me and vented quite often. She and I were constantly fighting about his daughter, Lauren. Carrie was always having to bathe Lauren's kids, feed them, do their laundry, cook for them, make their plates, basically everything a mother's supposed to do. Carrie was very tired and very fed up with the entire situation. What was even worse in the matter is that Ed never took Carrie's side. He always stood up for Lauren. The night after Carrie disappeared, Ed called me and asked if I'd seen Carrie, but I hadn't. What was unusual about this is that Carrie hadn't called me first, and she had always called me. Ever since Carrie's been missing, Ed hasn't shown any real concern because he hadn't posted Posted on his Facebook, hadn't been in contact with any of the news stations, hadn't been looking for her as thoroughly as he says he has. Not too long ago, my husband and Ed were texting each other about the night Carrie went missing, and Ed had mentioned that he was so mad at her he could have choked her but didn't have the strength. What was shocking about this is that Ed had told the police in the reports that they weren't fighting the night before she went missing. At this point, I do not trust Ed at all. I think he knows more than what he's telling everybody. Courtney, thank you for joining us. There's a couple things I, I want to point out. And then, by the way, the text you're talking about mm -hmm. from Ed to your husband <laughs> was a, a few months after she was missing. Yes. Um, and it reads, for whatever it's worth, the most likely place she would have gone is with a guy named Blank, who she worked with. He lives with his brother. I've been wanting to go over there since she disappeared. He's an alcoholic. She pissed me off so bad I wanted to choke her, but I didn't have the strength. You guys saved that because you thought it was worth saving. My husband saved everything. Yeah. She, she pissed me off by hitting me. That's, that's when I got pissed. But you said y'all weren't arguing. Uh, no, that night, that was the night that Ed called me, and that was Thanksgiving evening. Yeah, I, I, you, you have to understand that mentally, I'm just, I, 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 I can't, I can't remember a lot of details. Did, did you choke her? No. I, I, uh, I, I, I wanted to, but, you know, I just, I didn't have the, I mean, I, I wanted to defend myself, but I didn't have the strength. So, Ed, you Defend called me yourself that. from mm. what? Carrie hitting me in the head. When you say you wanted to choke her, do you mean you wanted to kill her? No. I just wanted to stop her from hurting me. You wanted to choke her to make her unconscious? You wanted no, to choke no, her? No, no. What, what, I, mean, I was just trying to get her attention. Oh. Yeah. Okay. You just wanted to choke her to stop her from attacking you? Exactly. It was, it was self-defense. She's attacked you before you were paralyzed. Yes. Did you choke her then? No. You've never heard I never heard her. Heard her. You've never hit her? No. no. I've witnessed you, you hit my mom before. You witnessed I it? I have. I've how? witnessed you put... You've never been around. Really? You've never been around. The last, like, I don't know how long. Um, you know, I do know Carrie said that... There was a time you were never on I was 15 with her. and I did... I, I tried mom. to I tried to get her to visit you at times, mm -hmm. and she didn't want to. <laughs> okay. If I may interject, Carrie has said I think she had said on numerous times that I was actually closer to her than you were. Honey, there's a whole journal about you. Um, so I doubt that. I don't give a about some journal. And number two, I'm trying to find this woman. Yes, sir. There was one instance where I, I grabbed her so she'd stop hitting me, and she hurt her collarbone. I never once provoked it. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil.
Is mom delusional? People say you stole an ambulance. That is the legend in the fire department. No, sir. I took my ambulance down to the beach. So you just borrowed the ambulance. That's tomorrow. I I'll thought we were here trying to find this woman, but if you um, want to talk about who said what to who and... I'm just so upset because of the lies and the accusations on their behalf as well. There, there are no so lies. are we here about lying past. behavior or are we here trying to find your mother? You're right. Well, I'm trying to find my mom. Yes, sir. I do apologize. Well, just... It, it's just however you want to spend your time. It's... I have never lied to you, Shelby. And I certainly wouldn't lie to you about anything with your mother. I've tried, I've tried to be as forthcoming as I can. Every lead I've gotten, I've passed on to you. And, um, no, you know, the, uh, it's not nearly as confusing as you think it is as far as where she'd been cited and all that. The way I describe it, it sounds like different places, but they're all, re they're all connected. And um, so it's not like I've, I ever tried to... Uh, misconceive you about where she'd been seen. I have I have no quarrel with you. I mean, other other than this little misunderstanding, and I know it's just a misunderstanding. To me, it feels like it's a big misunderstanding. Have you been violent with your wife on a frequent basis? No, I would I would defend myself. She would get drunk and very violent, and I would just have to defend myself. But I, I've never I've never just. And how often? Has that occurred? Basically, whenever she get drunk, which would be about every six months, six weeks to uh, to three months. You know, she she was okay. she didn't drink all that often, but when she did, she get totally totally trashed. So several times a year, you would wind up being attacked. Yes. Okay, and and then at time it would become physical. Yes. Because you know, it, I, I think. People could understand if if things if she attacked you and in defending yourself something happened accidentally. Mm -hmm. you know, people could understand that, and I'm just trying to ascertain if, if something like that has happened here. Um, you need to tell me and let me help you with that. Uh, there, there is one instance where. Um, I, 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 I grabbed her so she'd stop hitting me, mm -hmm. and she hurt her collarbone. When was that, Ed? Oh, it, it was, it's been several years, mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, Well, thank you for telling me that so I know. Okay. And, and, but this has happened on a regular basis. Yeah, and, and I, I never once provoked it. Mm -hmm. Everything I did was defensive. Right. And, um, did you have to defend yourself before, right before she went missing? Well, um, I, she, I was struck, mm -hmm. and I, I, but I was incapable of actually blocking anything. But she did strike you right before she left? Yes, she struck me in the head. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that was when Ed yep. called me afterwards, and he did, um, I asked him if we should call 911, and he said no, that Shelby's brothers were there, and that she, they had calmed her down, mm -hmm. and he was okay. <laughs> really believe she's alive? Absolutely. Because you know when I ask you that, you say yes, but you shake your head no. Do you need Dr. Phil's help? Text Phil to 88500 and share your story for a chance to appear on the show. Standard message and data rates may apply. If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click Be In The Audience. Or you can call 323-461-PHIL. That's 323-461-7445. She did strike you right before she left. Yes. Would that be on the 1st or the 2nd? Um, she left on the 2nd. I don't remember what day it was. It may have been before that. Yeah. When you called I mean, me, it was, the, it was Thanksgiving evening. Okay, it was, so it was before that. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, my, my whole memory of that period is, is really cloudy just because, you know, I was still recovering from the stroke. Well, since it's cloudy, is it possible that she actually attacked you 
the, the night that she left? No, that did not happen. Well, you said your memory was cloudy. Well, it wasn't that cloudy. <laughs> I can't remember which, what particular days, you know, it, it all kind of streams together for me because, you know, I, my mind is different than it used to be. Mm -hmm. So there was no altercation the, the night that she left? No, absolutely not. You're clear on that. Absolutely. You're not clear on the other things, but you're clear on that. Because that one sticks out because that's the night she left. We didn't even, we didn't, we were totally separated uh, that whole, mostly separated that whole day because she was staying on the couch. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, we, I hardly spoke to her on that day. Do you believe she's alive? Yes, I do, 100%. All my heart believes that she's just been seen too many times. Uh, there's no been no body found. Mm -hmm. I, I had actually asked uh, missing persons to reclassify as a homicide so because you believe I, she's alive. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you, you think she's out there somewhere? Yes, I know she is. And um, do you feel like you? Are making every effort to find her. Do you want to find her, or you think yes. if she wants to be gone, let her be gone? I absolutely want to find her. Uh, what happens after that, I'm not too sure. I mean, that's really up to her. But but I want to know that she's okay. Yeah, and she. It's the most important thing in my life. Yeah. Shelby objects to the fact that you've gone on a three-week vacation and done other things when you could have been hiring a private investigator to find her. I've had no money for a private investigator. And it's been the very therapeutic for me to spend time with my family. Dr. Phil, I mm -hmm. um, asked my brother to support me in a nonprofit event that I was engaged in in mm -hmm. Florida, where I live. And I, he, I flew him down there for 10 days so he could also be with my other brother. The three of us spent some time together, maybe about 10 days. Ed definitely needed to get out of the house. He still lives in the house that he and Carrie were together. In, and and he is he is very depressed. That was in May, and then we had a family reunion. There are five children. We all got five siblings. We all got together in Ohio, and I again paid for that trip. Where then he stayed with my sister. So there was really no cost to Ed. Do you think the most therapeutic thing would be to find his? Wife? That would be amazing. That'd be pretty therapeutic, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Do you really believe she's alive? Absolutely. Because you know when I ask you that, you say yes, but you shake your head no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that, that's your not... Your mouth no. says yes and your body says no. Yes, I believe she's alive. I'm shaking my head yes. After I told you it is. <laughs> we'll be right back. Want to get something off your chest? Sign up for the DrPhil.com community and weigh in on your favorite episodes and share your personal stories with other community members. Plus, get started on your own blog to share your thoughts on the topics that interest you most. I'll be reading those message boards. Log on to DrPhil.com today. Well, you've been seeing uh, phone numbers and you've been seeing pictures of this missing woman throughout today's show on the bottom third of the screen, and we've shown the picture many, many times. And listen, if you have any information about this woman in any way, then you need to pick up the phone and you need to call the phone numbers that we've provided you. Call the sheriff's office in, in your area and give that information. We want to find this woman, and it's... Uh, you know, we, we, we clearly want to know the answer, and you want to know the answer, good or bad, right? Right, yes, sir. Whether she's alive or yes, sir. whether she's not. And, you know, Carrie, if you're out there and you're watching this, uh, pick up the phone and call me. And you're going to give me a piece of information that only she would know so we can screen that call and know that it's her uh, so please if you have that information then give it to us and if you believe that this sighting at this drugstore 
which is a national chain that I guarantee you has high definition cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to get that. We need to get it mm -hmm. before dark today. We need to get that information and find it. They can get this down to a short period of time and when this clerk was on and we can find out you know, whether that was her or whether it's not. So this can be cleared up very, very quickly. So we will do that. You, you want to find her. There's nothing I want more in, in, in the world. Shaking than your head no her. again. I <laughs> uh, hope that's, I, I just hope you want to find her. I, I, I really do. Even if you don't want to be married to her, don't be married to her, but we want to find her, right? Ed wants to find yes. her. Yeah. I've, I've looked for her at least a hundred times. Yeah. Since, since, since she went missing. I, I, I was working downtown for a while and every day on my way there and on my way back, I would check well, in these parks. We've put a lot of attention on this, so hopefully this will give us some information. If you are trying to find a missing loved one and frustrated by the search, you know, right in the show, we want to help. You can go to Facebook, Twitter, you can text me uh, your story, let me know what challenges you're facing. You know, that's one of the things we can do here uh, and see what I can do to help. Uh, I want to thank all of my guests for being here. We really appreciate it. We will see you next time. weeks since we taped the show and unfortunately my mother is still missing. We haven't received any credible updates. However, Ed did advise that there was another sighting at the same store that she was seen outside of the store begging for change. I do believe it's another dead end. I'm standing at the drugstore which has become ground zero for Carrie sightings. She's been positively identified from surveillance video, which has been seen by the managers and missing persons. I'm confident that uh, I will be reunited with my loving wife soon.